Hi guys, welcome to Monocure 3D Pro Tips. Today we're going to unbox and set up the latest monochrome resin printer from Creality, the LD002H. Let's get into it. This printer came from Forge 3D. These guys offer great service and technical support and they're also resellers of our products. So they're obviously really smart guys. If you want to get one of these, make sure you mention Monocure 3D for a 10% discount. Now from what I understand about this printer is that it is very, very similar to its predecessor, which is the LD002R. The difference is, of course, it has the monochrome screen, which uh, we're all very excited about. So it comes with the standard tools there and the FEP film and of course a power cord. There we go. It's, these are always packed very well from Creality. Uh, you can't fault them on the packing. I also like the fact that they wrap it all in plastic as well. But I think it's a slightly different colour cover to the R version. It's a slightly darker orange. It's quite nice. It looks pretty smart. The front of the machine doesn't look too different. They do put the build plate in there and I remember that from the last one and it's a good one to remember before it's sort of hidden because it's got this little piece on top of it here and you can't really see it so just good to remember before you actually end up throwing that in the bin don't forget to grab the bill plate because without that you're not going to be printing at all <laughs> okay that's interesting they haven't put the top there you can see it doesn't actually sit in there some of them have a bearing it sits that lead screw into a bearing in there look it's not 100% necessary as long as this rail is very sturdy, then it, that, that's not necessary. So the vat looks bigger, but it actually isn't. Now I've been told that it's the same size as the LD002R, and they are actually interchangeable. So if you have that printer, you can use the vat from there into this, which is quite good. And these all line up apparently, so that's good. But this is a different size. These aren't obviously interchangeable but it is slightly bigger, which is an advantage. All in all, it looks very, very similar. It has the USB stick entry point here on the side. It has the power button, just like the R version. And if we spin it right around, it's also got the power cable there, which is a standard kettle cable. And all in all, it looks very, very similar. So let me run through the specifications. It is an MSLA LCD. The build volume is 130 by 82 by 160. It does layer heights between 30 and 50 microns. The resolution is a 2560 by 1620 pixels, 3.5 inch touchscreen. It will print any 405 UV resin, including of course the Monocure 3D resin. So a quick look to see what we get inside the package. The metal scraper, we all know not to put that inside the vat but it's fine for the build plate. Paint brushes, uh, they always come in handy for removal of the excess resin with the resin away. We always love getting the filters, they're always good. The plastic scraper, that's the one for inside the vat so we don't damage it. And it looks like we've got the standard uh, Allen keys there. The user manual after sales service card, quite a pretty USB with some flowers on it. So this is obviously going to have your information about the uh, printer and also potentially some test files, but we'll have a look at that later. So let's head downstairs to our 3D print lab where John will walk you through the setup and dialing in with our resin. Thanks Charlie. Now we're going to look at the LD002H. This is the new monochrome version of the LD002R. So let's have a look under the cover now. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is turn it on and raise up the Z axis. Go into tool, go into manual, select 10 millimeters and start raising. Undo the two screws for the vat. We can see there's some debris from all the packaging, but we can blow that out with the air gun. You'll see that there's a protective cover on the monochrome screen and you can remove that if you are planning to use the vat to level the build plate. Otherwise, you could just leave that there and use it to level the build plate directly onto it. Try not to ever level the build plate without something between the build plate and the monochrome screen because you will damage the surface of the glass that's under there. So let's just take that off for now and we have a nice clean screen. We can see there's a, another couple of features here that have been added to this model, these plates here. This helps align the vat when you're putting it back in placing it there and pushing forward and it won't go any further forward. It's got a, a, its perfect position there and I can tighten the screws. So I'm going to go clean this vat out. You can 
here the, the FEP screen is quite tight. As with the uh, Creality vats that we've seen in the past, they have graduation steps. If you look online, you'll be able to find a reference to say how many mils this represents. So let's put that back into the printer, tighten down the screws, grab the new build plate, and you'll see that this is a nice clean surface that's already been scuffed up. We do sell Wham Bam systems to support this printer. It does make removing the model a lot simpler. So now I'm going to go get my Allen key and we're going to do the leveling process by loosening those four screws. Now the head can move up and down and pivot, but note that the head can't really twist that direction. Another point to make is that the uh, Creality printers do not use washers on the screws. My suggestion as an upgrade is to put washers on each of these screws. It makes um, tightening them much easier without causing any twist on the plate. The snugness of this plate is not fantastic. Down the track I might look at putting a, a little metal shim in there just to tighten it up because I've found that uh, when you tighten the screws this can cause the plate to bend slightly and it makes the plate twist. So let's get that home. So we'll go down to the home button. So now the plate has homed. I'm just going to press gently down on the plate and start to tighten these screws. So I'll start by doing a very loose tighten first. Diagonally moving across one side to the other. Now that they're tight, we can then raise the build plate back up. In Chidu Box, we're going to have a look at the uh, settings for the LD002H. If you have the latest version of Chidu Box, you'll see that there is, in fact, an H. We now have the H listed there. So you can add that to the list of printers and then you can define the settings that you're going to use. Okay, I'm going to set up a new profile for a new resin that is based on tough that is called Crystal Clear. This is in our new Pro range. The Crystal Clear has a slower curing time, so the current curing time to use for tough will have to be extended out for this particular resin. I'm going to set it for the H, which is a monochrome screen, to be roughly about Let's start with three seconds and see how that goes for the um, calibration model. The bottom exposure time, I'll make that about 20 seconds and we'll leave everything else as is. I might make the rise time the same as the R. The bottom lift speed, I'll set that to 50 and I'll set the regular lifting speed to about 62. Retract speed, 150. Bottom my account, will make four. And we've got anti-aliasing on. Okay, so let's get rid of the models that are in there and put the calibration model in. Okay, now that we've added the Monocure 3D calibration model, I'm going to rotate it around at a slight angle just to improve the quality of that print, and then I'm going to slice it. I'll save that to the USB stick. So now that's ready. I'll bring it over here, I'll plug it in, shake up our crystal clear. Always remember shake the bottle thoroughly every time you need to use it. Even though it's got no pigment in it, it still needs shaking. All right, as you can see, after you've shaken the bottle and poured it out, there is quite a few bubbles from that shaking. If you're patient, you can let them all dissipate over a number of minutes. So to remove the bubbles, you can use a source of heat and that will get rid of the bubbles on the surface. Using a strong source of heat on the bubbles causes them to expand and pop. This also helps to warm up the resin. The warmer the resin, the less viscous it is. Then we go into print and we select the model to print. We'll let that run and come back in a few minutes. Okay, now that the uh, MonoCure 3D test model is completed, we can remove it from the printer just by loosening the screw and taking the plate off. Just let that drip. Now, if you have a look down the bottom of the vat, it looks like the FEP is almost sticking to the glass underneath. It's not actually doing that. What you're finding is that because it's been pressing the model down numerous times in that location that the model was sitting in, it's actually causing the FEP to almost stick to the glass. Now, it's not actually sticking to the glass, it's just pressed so hard to the glass that it looks like it's stuck. There's no resin underneath there, it's just, that's what happens with the FET. And sometimes it will almost look like bubbles under there. It's nothing to worry about. Some people um, have claimed that if you put a bit of talc underneath the surface there, it doesn't stick to the glass, but I don't think you really need to bother with doing any of that. If you see that, don't worry. 
If, however, you take the vat off and you find that there's resin all over the glass, then you've got a problem. You may have a hole in the vat. Now, in this case, I'm actually going to leave it on the plate because I'm going to expose the UV light to post-cure it while it's still attached to the plate. So I'm going to rinse off the resin on there using our resin away. Let's brush it off there. And I'm going to go and stick that inside the ultrasonic cleaner over there for five minutes. So now we've cleaned our model off. Okay, now that that's cured, we can have a look at the model and see whether it is under or over cured. That looks pretty good. Maybe 2.6 instead of 3 seconds would do the best. Because you can see the CTRL, the C slight, slightly closed in. So that at 3 seconds on the H is a little bit too high. So I bring that back to about 2.6 seconds. So the new crystal clear that we have, its main benefit is to not let it yellow. Now, if you put it into a strong curing station like the one we've got, even for a short period of time, that 405 nanometer UV light is super strong. That's 100 watts in there. The 100 watts will make it yellow a little bit. If you put it into a low power curing station of about 10 to 15 watts and do it over a period of half an hour, even 20 minutes, you'll get much better results and the resin will look perfectly white and clear. There won't be any yellow tinting. However, if you do over cure it and it does go yellow, it doesn't matter. Within a few days, that yellowing will go away and it'll be perfectly crystal clear. Right, now that I've got that print off the build plate, I'm gonna put the build plate on the LD002H and get another print started. Back to you, Charlie, upstairs. Thanks, John. Well, I hope you found that informative. Just a reminder, if you live in Australia and you wanna get one of these from a well-respected and recommended local supplier, give the guys at Forge 3D a call. Details in the description below. Thanks for watching guys, you can find all the settings for this printer and heaps of others on our website. Remember to subscribe to the channel, but most importantly, remember to keep on 3D printing.